Or by agreement. Senator Colette Keller. I'm mean, pre preaching to the converted, so obviously. Um, no, I'm, I'm really, really pleased that. Um, uh, You're moving 13 anyway. Senator. I am moving 13 to 25. Um, you can uh, move them individually, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I'll move them collectively. Um, I suppose uh, it's about that. Um, that the, this, um, uh, that what we're talking about is that uh, every child has a right to education, and that this bill is to be welcomed. Um, because it seeks to overcome obstacles put in the way for children by the manner in which schools can operate their admissions policies and procedures with the effect of effectively denying that that child their right to education and all that follows in terms of accessing third level education and employment. Um, children with disabilities, special needs and autism have the right to education. This was fought for long and hard. That is why I am calling for a stronger statement of the Minister's duties in the section of the Bill because it is about children with special needs, including autism. It is about their right to access education. And it is because of this that I am proposing that we have a firm commitment from the Minister in law that the Minister shall act, not the discretionary may act, as set out in the section. The right to access education for the child with special needs should not only rely on or be left to the discretion of one person. And I'm also proposing that the procedure as laid out in the section be as swift as possible. Lengthy procedures delays and denies children their rightful access to education. And that is why I am proposing the time frames as outlined in my amendments at the various stages of the process. Whilst every child with autism is a unique person, there are some characteristics associated with the condition of autism. Structure is very important. Routines play an important role in the lives of people with autism. The everyday hustle and bustle that most people view as normal can be overwhelming combinations of frightening crowds, intimidating sounds and overbearing lights. You can just imagine how scary school can be for the child with autism. Routines help create stability and order. So children with autism like routine and like predictability, and they often find change extraordinarily difficult, often creating huge anxiety in the child, often played out in challenging behaviour. And we all know that the secondary transfer is one of the big challenges, one of the major changes to routine, one of the biggest upheavals in a child's life, in any child's life. It's an even bigger one if you're a child with autism who may struggle with that major change. An even bigger challenge if it's not at all clear or certain to what school you are transferring or when or even if you have a place. So every effort should be made by CNOs and the National Council for Special Education to identify children in their area with autism, in special classes and otherwise, and to start planning early, at the beginning of sixth class or before. Children with autism should have the longest lead-in time possible for the smoothest and least stressful transfer to secondary school possible. Children with autism should have the time to prepare, familiarise and get used to the new school setting, new activities, the new faces and places. Where difficulties arise in relation to identifying a suitable school place with a special classroom or unit, the procedure set out in this section should commence as early as possible and be completed as quickly as possible, as per my amendments. Whereas the Bill as presented proposes in some cases 28 days between the various steps, I am proposing throughout a maximum of 14 days, which still provides ample time for the processes. Sometimes these processes are just a matter of writing a letter. This is to ensure that the child with autism can take up their place in secondary school with their peers and start in September like every other child, not delaying, not adding to their stresses and anxieties or those of their parents because of lack of certainty about their school place, where they will be or where they, uh, where they, where they will know for sure they will be, not adding to their sense of difference or otherness to their peers or siblings, not to be made to wait for their rightful education. And turning to the amendment with regards to reviewing the legislation, Minister, my amendment seeks to insert a three-year review provision into the Section 8 of the Bill. This gives the Minister the power and obligation to initiate a review no later than three years after this Bill comes into operation. It also obliges the Minister to no, to, to no later than 12 months after the commencement of this three-year review to make a report to each of the Houses of the Oireachtas. The rationale for the addition of this review procedure, Minister, is that we need to monitor uh, so that we are able to assess whether the Bill is actually having its intended impact, if it is actually working, if it is addressing the clear gap in provision of ASD classrooms, particularly between primary and secondary school, if the Bill is indeed delivering the education to which children with autism have a right. You yourself, Minister, stated when we were here last week that the autism education gap is in fact 
closing somewhat, but the fact of the matter is that the gap still remains. I understand for the 2018-2019 academic year from figures provided to me and extrapolated from information from the National Council for Special Education, there are approximately 731 ASD classrooms nationally at primary level. In contrast, at secondary level, there are approximately 320, uh, less than half than at primary level. The autism education gap may be closing, but frankly, it's not closing fast enough. I understand in Dublin there are roughly 137 ASD classes at primary level, but only 41 at secondary level. And in Cork, the most up-to-date figures I have, that there are around 119 ASD classrooms and yet only 53 at second level. These numbers don't even take into account those children still in mainstream classes who may require ASD classes at secondary level. The proposed three-year review is needing and eliminating this appalling inequity of ASD classes between primary and secondary. The review and annual report proposals are monitoring mechanisms to make sure our attempts to close this and eliminate the autism education gap are indeed working and that no child with autism is denied access to education because of lack of a place in a school with a suitable autism classroom or unit. We both want the same thing, Minister, and I hope you will support the review amendment. Without it, we would have no real way of knowing if this bill has been effective. Um, and in guaranteeing the right to ed education, a suitable setting for children with autism as they make the very challenging and all-important transition to secondary school. We want to see the autism gap eliminated.